Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I went on a D-Case trip with my duo teammate Spook Dog, and spoiler warning by the way, uh, I'm about to show you the collection log because we got a pretty nice drop there, or I did. <laughs> at least I got the pet Dagnoth Rex at 130kc before even getting the B-Ring. And besides for that, I built the Ancient Altar in the POH last video, and I was like, you know what, I may as well just train up construction a couple more levels and upgrade it to the Occult Altar, so that's what we did. And then we also upgraded the Jewelry Box, and it would be nice to get the pool upgraded in the POH, but we still need to get Spook's Herbler up for anti-venoms. The plan for now, though, is just to continue on doing Slayer, still hoping for a Serb task, although at this rate, we'll probably end up getting 93 Slayer before even getting a Serb task, and then we'll be hoping for a Thermi task at that point. What a name. All right, uh, we still have that Dagnoth task, but I'm just going to be AFKing them in the catacombs. Uh, we are currently 121k to 93. Let's get into it. At some point from this stack of neck reels, we are going to be getting a per level. There it is, 74. I love the Ash Sanctifier. Oh, 95 magic. That is a pretty big one. Thank you. Man, these neck reel tasks are such good XP. XP in which skill, you may ask? The answer is yes. Look at that, 81k Slayer XP. We're already, like, at this point, one task away from getting 93 Slayer. Here we go. There it is, 93 Slayer, yes. So you can see I have the Slaughter Bracelet in my inventory. If I didn't bring that, I would have been like eight kills off or something. So I just wanted to make sure I would get the level before the task is over. So that way we now have a chance to get a Thermi task. Now that we can get a Smoke Devil task, there's a chance to get the Occult Necklace, which would be a huge upgrade for magic. But first, is there an extension for Smoke Devils? Oh, never mind. apparently there is no extension. But the first task, since getting 93 Slayer, let's see. Okay, well, I guess free Slayer points. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped and their Performance Package 4.0, which is an all-in-one men's grooming kit to cover all parts of your body. Now, what comes in the Performance Package 4.0? Well, thank you very much for asking. We have ball toner and ball deodorant. And then it also comes with the Weed Whacker, which is a nose and ear hair trimmer. As we get older, hair starts growing in places we never thought it would before. And especially for your nose and ears, it's very important that you don't pluck that hair. You want to trim it. And then, of course, the best part of the performance package, the Lawn Mower 4.0, which is cordless, waterproof, rechargeable, and it has their skin safe technology to help prevent cuts and nicks. Probably my favorite part about it is that it has a light when you turn it on, which I never thought is something I would need until I got the Lawnmower 4.0 and started using it. It has a travel lock, so if you triple press it and then try to turn on, it won't turn on until you again triple press it and then it'll turn on. The Performance Package 4.0 also comes with two free gifts, a travel bag and their anti-shaving boxers. So go to manscaped.com or use my link in the description with code MUDKIP20 at checkout for 20% off, free international shipping, and those two free gifts I mentioned before. And give the gift of Manscaped to someone that you care about, or even for yourself, you gotta treat yourself right because as they say, new year, new balls. And thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. As much as I appreciate this Slayer XP, I feel like I'm going to end up getting a whole nother level or a couple more levels before I end up getting a Thermi or a Serp task, but I can't say no to this. Max amount of neck reels. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know if that was my seed. Oh, I guess it was. I guess I got a Snapdragon seed, but the guy picked it up. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, you want the seed? I didn't even realize that there was a seed that I missed on the ground. And as a joke, I was like, yeah, I'll take it. And he actually dropped it in Hop Worlds. <laughs> oh, so innocent. Okay, I've got a bit of a flex to show you here. Uh, if we look at Temple OSRS, uh, this is for duo group Iron Man, but the individual players in the duo group Iron Man teams. Uh, and this is for Slayer. I am rank one out of all individual duo team individual players and this isn't even update yet with level 93 so yeah it's it's pretty cool i'm sure i'm not gonna have it for too long but yeah i guess this means that if i get a thermi task i could be the first group iron matter we could be like the first duo team at least to have uh cold necklaces i mean i guess there's a chance that rank 2 also hasn't been updated yet so maybe they already have 93 and maybe they already have a cult necklaces but probably not definitely not rank 3 though because that's like really far away oh i just got 98 hit points i wasn't even like i didn't realize i was so close there is another shaman's task done and the kc is now up to 
just over 1300. Normally you have to be on task for Thermi, but you are allowed to do one kill for the diary off task as long as you have 93 Slayer. If you don't have 93 Slayer, you can't boost to do this, but I have 93 so we can do the one kill for the diary and see if we get lucky with the occult necklace. Your thermonuclear smoke devil kill count is one. This is a trick I learned on my UYM. Whenever I'm low at food and I get a gargoyle superior, they do drop a lot of cast runes and death runes, and if you have no food, that implies that you've been here for a while, so you've probably gotten at least one of those drops. Uh, so you can just like go out of the range from attacking you, but the attack distance for using magic is really far, so you can pretty much just safe spot them this way. I am getting very close to 99 strength, and I will be getting it from this Dagnaw task. Uh, you can see I have the untrimmed fire making cape in my inventory, and that's just so that we can watch it get trimmed, because when you get a second 99, it automatically trims all the untrimmed capes you have on your account if you bought one or multiple from your first 99. There is a way to keep it untrimmed if you drop your fire making cape or multiple of them on the ground, then you get the 99 and then you telegrab it. You can't pick it up, you have to telegrab it. And you could do that every time you get a 99 if you want to keep your original cape untrimmed. But I personally don't care about keeping it untrimmed because I know if I make a big deal out of doing that now, then in the future I'm going to mess it up at some point and it's only going to set me up for sadness. Here we go. 99 strength. Oh, I didn't get the music up in time. Well, there we go, second 99 on the account. I guess we'll uh, go buy the cape then. I just realized you didn't even like actually get to see the fire making cape get trimmed because I, I was uh, in the music thing trying to turn the music on, but whatever, it doesn't matter anyways. 99 KGP, sure, and there we go. Second 99 on the group Iron Man. And of course, we'll do the emote. And the special perk of this cape is that it gives you a teleport to the Warriors Guild which isn't really that useful, I guess, for an account with a bank, but for Ultimate Iron Man, it is very useful because it's a fast way to get to these two shops here, the one that sells the cheesy potatoes and the one that sells the regular potions, but for an account that has a bank, not really useful skill cape, so because of that, it is going in the POH. On to the cape rack to possibly never be touched again. And now that I don't need any more strength XP, I can focus all the XP onto either attack or defense because to train strength, you have to share the XP between all threes in the whip. So now that I can focus all the XP onto attack or defense, these combat stats are gonna be going up a lot faster. And already there is an attack level 85. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with attack for a while till like at least level 90 probably. Still no serve task, still no throw me task, but hey, we got <laughs> we got 1900 KC and a Kraken Tentacle. Oh, there's a full trident, AKA saving runes, AKA saving GP. Oh, Sedel just uploaded his uh, full Mauritania series in one video. So if your GF asks you to go to bed, you can be like, fine, babe, just one more video. And that is, 2000 KC at the Kraken. Oh, there's a jar of dirt. So now Spook has one if she wants. I mean, I guess it's not the same as having it in your collection log, but that's something. Nearly exactly on drop rate for a second one as well, since it's one out of 1K. Dirt L, please. I am very respectfully asking you for either a Serb or a Thermi task. Yes, finally, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> since 91 Slayer, I even went back in the clips and checked. I got 91 Slayer on December 20th, and that was on task number 354 uh, is when I got 91 Slayer, and we are currently on task number 427. That is 73 tasks to finally get Cerberus, and I checked the calculator as well. There was a 5% chance for me to get a Headcounts task, and there's also a 4% chance for me to get a Thermi task, but I'm so glad that we got it. The only problem now though is because I've been doing so much Slayer, I'm pretty much out of food. Crumb ones are like the main food that I would use, but I do have some raw ones that I fished. I have 1800, so we're gonna cook some of these right now because this will be the food that I'll be using for Cerberus. Wait, no. I swear I always do that every single time. Okay, let's get cooking. Even though the Myths Guild is nice for cooking because the range is right next to the bank, I'm not gonna be one ticking the crown bond, so it's not a big deal if it's a few steps away. And the Hostidious Kitchen gives you a 5% increased chance to successfully cook. Um, so I'll just be cooking them here instead. We got the cooking level 81. There's 1k Karambond. We should be set for at least this task. And then we gotta relocate the POH to Taverly to get to Serb faster instead of using the Faldor teleport. As we're heading over to Serb, I wanted to show you its unique drop table. We have a 1 in 128 chance of hitting it, and from there, each of the four crystals are weighted equally. So it's a 1 out of 512 to get a specific one. The three on top are the upgrades to create the best in slot melee, range, and mage boots 
units in the game respectively, and the Smoldering Stone we can use to upgrade the Dragon Pick, Dragon Harpoon, or Dragon Axe. But the first one that I would get would be for the Axe because you need it for a clue step, and it's the only one that we have anyways. The other thing I wanted to mention was the Ghost Skipping method. If you want to save Prayer Pots at Serb, I'd recommend looking up a guide for it. Um, but you pretty much spend a minute waiting at Serb to skip the first round of ghosts, which usually allows you to kill Serb without any ghosts spawning. I tried this on my UIM, and I personally don't like it because you just stand around counting hits or counting seconds, and besides that just being unfun for me, I'd rather spend that time thieving Master Farmers for thieving, farming, and Herblor XP to make up for the lost pair of pots and gain that XP. And it also helps to have Guffins for that method too, which we don't have. Alright, here's my Serb setup. So we're going to use the Arc Light because Serb counts as a demon. You gotta make sure to have it on Stab though. The Ring of Suffering is actually really good at a lot of the bosses because of the recoil effect, so just gotta make sure that's on. And that actually does quite a bit of damage. Now apparently Thralls are also really good to use here, except I just don't like making POH tablets, so if I had the Con Cape I'd probably be using uh, Thralls. But I also don't want to be down a couple inventory spots. Probably should use Thralls, but I'm not going to. And we got the DDS for the spec weapon, and uh, oh yeah, because we have 80 agility now, I used that shortcut for the first time, and we got an elite Faldor task done. And speaking of tasks, I'll probably be getting quite a few combat uh, tasks done here, because it's my first time at Serb. Oh look, Cerberus has the three hats on, on each head for the holidays. That's it, that's the video title right there. Let's see, there's a task right there. There's another task. First trip of Serb, and we got 6kc. This is fun, I missed this place. There's another task. Also, Winds of Zamrak is a really good drop, I forgot we get those from Serb. I've been bringing five prayer pods but I'm still running out of food first so what I'm gonna do is just pre-pot the super attack and super strength at the bank maybe even super defense um, and then I'll have two more spots for food. The only super defense potions I have are these two so I asked Spook if she could give me some since she's the one who's training Herblore and she said she put some in the group storage let's see how much is in there. No way, dude, that's the number. No way, new collection log slot, key master teleport. Hey, I hit 50kc, which means once I log off, I'll be ranked for Serb. And at this point, there's probably not too many group Iron Man, especially duo group Iron Man that are ranked for Serb yet, so I feel like that's pretty cool. And a rude no more. Oh, I did that kill without spawning any ghosts. Nice without her spawning any ghosts. And it is dinner time, and I can't do Serb while I eat, so I need to AFK. I'm gonna be doing Motherload Mine because I still need the coal bag, uh, which is gonna be really important for making bars, for darts especially, is what I've had on my mind. Right now we have uh, 20 golden nuggets, and we need to get to 100. And luckily I do have the upper level unlocked already. All right, I have done a couple of hours of Motherload Mine, and it is time to get back to it. But before we go back to Serb, it's kind of late right now, so I figured now would be a good chance to go train prayer at the Wildy Altar. Um, because the higher the prayer level for Serb, the better and the, like the easier it is. So let's see how many bones we have. This is what we got. First thing I'm going to do though is redirect this Salve Graveyard Teleport because I don't need that anymore since we have the Fairy Ring built in the POH. We're going to build the Gorak Teleport there. And oh, wait, you can boost for this. I'm like so close to the level 2. Okay, one sec. You can boost magic to build these portals in the POH, but for some reason you can't boost to add these teleports to the Nexus. Okay, now redirect Salve Graveyard to Gorok. Nice. We have the Locator Orb from Dragon Slayer 2, and we're going to need that along with, for each trip, uh, one teleport to the POH, and then just as a test run, or maybe like I'll do a few trips at Big Bones just to like get the hang of it. So we'll grab the Big Bones out of here, teleport to the POH, and then you can configure the left click on Runelite, uh, I think it's from Menu Entry Swap, where you can configure that, you can set that to Use save it, and then the left click option by default will be used, which is really useful for using bones on the Wildy Altar. And it's useful to use the Player Indicators plugin and then highlight others so that way you can see people in game or on the minimap and they'll be nice and bright red for you, or whatever color you set it to. Okay, don't have my cash stack on me, let's go to Gorok. And we'll be using the Cellport in the future as well to get the KVD and the Chaos Fanatic over here when we go for certain other items, but have my quick prayer set to these, maybe I'll switch that around, maybe melee would be better, I don't know. But I'm going to run over to the Wildy Altar, and it's like the dead of night right now. There's like, peak, whatever the opposite of peak is, minimum trough amount of players online. And here we go. Imagine you PK a level 114 combat at the Wildy Altar and you just get a full inventory of big bones. Imagine how confused the PKer would be. And then after I finish the inventory, we use the Locator Orb, which is going to do a bunch of damage. And then once we get to one health, we try to take the one of Zamrak. 
and then we die and we respawn over here, run to the bank, grab out more bones, another house teleport, and then repeat this process. And it looks like we got 2,600 prayer XP from that trip. And also, if you don't know how the Wildy Altar works, it gives you the same prayer XP as using a lit gilded altar in the POH, except there's a 50% chance to save your bones. So it essentially doubles your bones, because if you think about the bones that you save, you also get a 50% chance to save those bones too. So that's why it doubles your bones, and it's not just like 1.5 times your bones. Which means that even if you get PK'd and lose all your bones, like not even half of them you lose all your bones every other trip that's still the same as using the gilded altar in the poh and you don't have to worry about the mirror until this way normally i always play in fixed mode but there are certain skilling activities where i play in resizable but normally when i play resizable for those very specific activities i'm in the modern layout because i just really prefer that but this is probably the only activity in the game where I play resizable classic layout, just because I like where the log up button is right down here, versus if you're playing in modern, it's up here in the corner, which is just something I'm not used to. This is just like really cool to me because I've been so restricted to playing UIM for such a long time, and even before then I was restricted to playing hardcore, so I've never felt this freedom to just like be able to go to the Wildy Altar anytime. I, I did do it on the UIM, but it was a lot more stressful because all my items were on the ground. I had to do things in a very specific way, like unnoting them and dropping them on the ground and then dying again. It was, it was very, very specific, but this is just so easy and I feel so free. And this is why I really want to play like a non-restricted Iron Man like this because I just can experience all these things that I never got the chance to experience before. And it's, it's just so nice. Late night thoughts with me. Dude, it's legit, just like all group Iron Man here. Was it this video or last video? I'm like, yeah, bro, the Willy. There's no PKers in the Willy. Everyone knows the Willy's for Iron Man. <laughs> I actually logged off because I saw like the red text on the screen. Even though like I've been uh, training prayer with him for a little while now, I saw the red text and I just immediately logged off and then logged back in because I saw that it was just him again. PKers in the Willy? Psh, don't be ridiculous. I had a few Vorkath bones from the very few Vorkath, the four Vorkath kills I did for the assembler and look at that freaking XP, that's so nice. I guess the PKer killed someone and like they just leave the bones on the ground because they're just not even like worth enough to even be worth their time picking up. Let's see, there is 75 prayer. I can now wield the Ellie. I'm telling you, dude, it's all group Iron Man here. There's a PKer and they're killing me very, very slowly. <laughs> Okay, let's try to use up as many bones as we can. <laughs> they just gave up. <laughs> oh man, what are they doing, dude? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> and then uh, I saved the bones, so... I guess, I guess that kind of saved me time overall, didn't it? Plus the stress of being attacked makes me try to click faster, so... Wait, I should just like... I should like leave the baby dragon bones in my inventory just so that like when this guy PKs me, he'll just be like, what the hell baby dragon bones? Bro, what is he wearing, man? The split bark? What year is it? 2022? Something to watch out for, by the way, is PKers that put GIM in their name so that when you see them on the minimap, you don't just like immediately log off. Um, I mean, not this guy, but just like other people. Never trust a name you see on the mini-map. <laughs> uh, come on, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> this, is, this is so hard to like, I'm not even... <laughs> okay, now you can PK me. <laughs> Bro, just kill me! Thank you. See, will this be the first person to get any bones off of me? They got some of my bones. There's probably a decent chance that they're just gonna leave them on the ground. Oh wait, I lost the locator orb, I have to get more. Okay, locator orbs and grab a full inventory. So convenient. Let's see if they actually picked up the baby dragon bones. If they did, I will be judging them very hard because these are worth, let's see, 478 each. Yeah, they left them on the ground. <laughs> I don't even know if it's worth their time picking up regular dragon bones, but yeah, definitely not for baby dragon bones. And as you can see, I can just pick these straight back up 
and then proceed to use them on the altar. It's funny how I'm trying to roast people when I'm the one who's using baby dragon bones here. And that is the end of all the worthwhile bones used up. We got so close to 77 prayer, but that's okay because we still have some insult heads in the bank that we can use to get that level. With all those very random uh, different combinations of bones I ended up using, I got 334k XP, averaging over 230k XP per hour. And the only bones I have left now are the big bones, but the only thing I use these for are to get the daily free bone meal and buckets of slime to upkeep ecto tokens. Hey, there we go. 77 prayer. We can now use augury once uh, we get an arcane prayer scroll from raids. Well, I'm just going to finish up this inventory and then tomorrow morning we will get back to Serb and finish off that task. Whoa, look at the new login screen. Next just came out. Oh wait, do you see like the little in the flames normally it shows the runes, but now that's the zero symbol. So yeah, next came out today, but I feel like we're not really ready at this point to be doing next on our account. So we're going to hold off on that for now. Um, but what we do have here is a nice way to start the day with a hunter level, level 81. Okay, let's get back to Serb. Hey, we just got uh, 85 defense and 1900 total level at the same time. That is 150 Serb KC. I am now a Cerberus veteran. And this is the last kill of the Serb task. No crystals at all, but we got up to 156 KC. I just calculated the amount of arc light and suffering charges I used, and I put that in the chat box here. Uh, for the arc light, it came out to about 24 charges per kill, and the suffering was just over 6 charges per kill. Overall, I averaged about 5 kills per trip and averaged about 25 kills per hour. And then we can take a look at the combat tasks I finished too. I finished every single task except the one where you have to kill Serb 250 times. So we just have to wait till the next task for that. The Serb pet's probably one of my favorite pets in the game and I've never got it on any account. So it'd be cool to get it one day. It is one out of 3k though. Which reminds me, fun fact by the way, uh, if you didn't know, Spook Dog's name comes from Cerberus, a spooky dog. Kind of comes from Hellhounds too. Or I guess more of her in-game name comes more from Hellhounds, Heckhound or Hellhound. Cerberus, yeah. Anyways, I'm glad I got that little bit of Cerberus out of my system so I won't be in like a rush to get that task anymore. Um, at this point, the main focus is gonna be getting an occult necklace, which is what we're gonna be going for in the next video. If you wanna check out Spook Dog's channel, you can find a link below in every video description. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again next time.